So what I'm sharing in this video is how to create a wireframe outer form with any solid object. We'll be starting by creating the base form in Rhino, then creating the script for the wireframe, and at the end creating a base form using a fully parametric script. So thank you very much for being here and let's jump right in. So to start, we'll create a set of random boxes, and that's going to give us our base geometry, which we'll use to start our script. So I'll go here and just create a box using a box, and then I'll go here to shaded mode so I can see it. Then I'll hold down alt and using the uh, gumball, I'm just moving this around and creating some copies. That intersect. So all of these are pretty regular size. So now I'll hold down shift and change the size for some of these. Okay, so now we can use, let's say, something like this and put it together using Boolean union. You don't have to type in the entire command, you can just do BU for Boolean union, and that will take care of it. Now this is one complete solid that we could use inside of our script to show you the exercise of creating the wireframe for something like this. The first thing we'll do is bring in the geometry from Rhino into Grasshopper. So we'll start by double clicking on open space here and we'll bring in a BREP, which means boundary representation. And this is going to allow us to bring this object in. So I'll select it here in Rhino and I'll go here in Grasshopper, right click, Set one B rep. Now, with this in here in Rhino, we can change the size and move it around, and it will always be the object that is attached to the Grasshopper script. You can always also add objects and then reset your object. So, with this, we can also hide it. And now we're previewing the geometry like you would typically see it inside of Grasshopper. That is here using draw shaded preview geometry. And so now we'll be creating our script using this BREP. The first thing we'll do is we'll take this BREP and we will deconstruct it or explode it into the different parts. If you look at this object, we have various things that make up this shape. We have planes, which are the surfaces. We have the lines, which are the curves. And we have the vertices, which are the points at each corner. So that is the basics of the geometry that we have here. Now we can use Grasshopper here to explode or deconstruct. So we can pick the edges as line segments. When you deconstruct it, now you can pick the faces, edges, or vertices, and we'll be picking the edges. Now at this point that we have deconstructed, we can take the original BREP and disable the preview because now we're previewing the deconstructed portion. Now the this simple exercise is going to show you taking these edges as long as they are aligned with the x, y coordinates, we can create a pipe at each curve. So we'll take the edges, plug them into the curves, and now notice that we have created a wireframe. Now we can deconstruct or disable the preview. And so that is how we can create a wireframe. Now notice that these are open. So that's where here, this is a critical portion. Caps, you can go flat here. Now the issue is going to be this. That now we're going to be creating a bounding box at each or a box around each pipe. But notice that the corners are missing. So if I disable the preview here, and that may be like a cool look, let's say for something else, but if we're trying to create this seamless wireframe, what we need to do is go to caps, round, and now they're overlapping. To bring this all together, now we can go here to our box output and go to union or solid union 
same thing as boolean union we'll plug this in and we'll flatten the input this way it brings all of those in as one long list and we have at the end one closed b rep here now some of the things that you'll notice is when you have overlapping geometries and you do boolean union you'll have instances where you have something like this called a crease where this is a solid object but this curve doesn't necessarily have to be there this because this surface and this surface are planar or coplanar which means we don't necessarily need this edge to fix that we will go to merge faces which will merge coplanar faces and get rid of that And here's the thing, we haven't even changed the radius of our pipe. So if we went here and we said 1.50, we can change the radius. And it will change it for all of them. Here is the other thing, if we type in show, we can bring back the original geometry, which is not, is still kind of in this basic mode. So if I wanted to, I can bring this back and I can scale this up and change the original form. And what's cool is that it will maintain the size for the pipe. What's the reason why that's important is because typically let's say if you were to create a frame like this when you scale it from a smaller size to a larger size the proportions of the frame that you set originally are going to change and what happens is when you make this no matter how big you make it it doesn't do that it actually takes the script and it will always make it this size so that's one of the advantages of using grasshopper in creating a script is that you can basically do anything you want and not necessarily mess up the original and be have your numbers be consistent and save a little bit of time so now what we'll do is this is going to be the script that creates a wireframe but now i want to show you how to create the base geometry using a fully parametric script that's pretty straightforward and can help you understand how to use various techniques for your designs so let's get into that. What I want to do now is I'll take this and move it over to the side. And now here we can start our next script. This is going to be right next to it. I'll move this down and we'll start by creating some, a box. So I'll go here to a box component. And typically I use a rectangle and an extrude height to create a box, but there's also box rectangle that lets you, it's not that one, it's rectangle, or no, it's box, here. domain box. So we can use whatever size, 15, X, Y, and Z. And we can change it. So actually, let's just use one. We can here, rather than reset or override it, we can go through it like this, and it will create it for just the box. But the idea is to create inside of this box some random points. So we can create random points using populate geometry and this box is going to be the geometry and the count will say 5, uh, 15. So within this box there are 15 points. Now at those points we'll create some spheres. Now there are different ways of doing this. The way I'm doing it is using a sphere. 
the radius is going to be random. So we'll go here to a random component because we want to create a random size for the spheres. When you create a random set of numbers, this is actually one of the things I want to do a video about is creating random numbers and how hard it is in reality to do that and how this does that for you. But what we'll do is create a set of random numbers. We need to know how many. So to know how many is how many points we have. That's how many random numbers we want. Now the range is how large they're going to be. And since we're creating a random set, we need to have a range, let's say between five and 15, and it will create a random set of numbers between the set. So what we'll do is go to construct, domain, which lets you create a start and end point. This is where we'll, we'll create 15, So we'll just do 15, 30 as maxed, and 15 as minimum. Now we'll use that domain as a range. And C is going to be, well, when you create random points, can't you just always create random points? Well, you can, and that's what C is. It gives you another random set of where those points can be, or where the the different sizes can be. Same with the seed for the points. If I change the seed, then we get more solutions to the problem and they're all random. We'll go here zero and zero. And so we have a set of 15 random numbers between 15 and 30. Now we'll use those random numbers as the radius. Notice that when we change the lower limit, we'll change, it'll change everything here. But now with this, we can take the sphere and create boxes around it. And since all the spheres have different sizes, well, the boxes are going to have different sizes. And that's a technique that I use for creating subtractions. Sometimes I create a sphere to create the overall volume and use a box to subtract like a rectangular form from it. So I'll type in box here. Now we can disable the preview on everything else. And we'll actually decrease this. And maybe decrease the number of points. And if we don't like the way that they're kind of separated, we can always change it. Okay. Now at this point, let's see if we can put this all together. So with these boxes, we'll go to union, solid union, and bring it all together. Let's see if we can... I'm just changing some of the numbers so we get a better result here. I'm saying that the big number is a little bit small and the large number is a little bit. So just moving things around here until we get something cool. Okay, so let's say we wanted this. Now we can turn that into the wireframe. Now I feel like that's going to be just too much because it has too many edges, but that should still work. Here's my concern. We'll use four, like this. There it is. That should work. 
Okay, with this script, now we have a parametric design that is changing here we're using the script but then at the end it takes that solid and turns it into a wireframe so there are many applications to this this is a little bit more of an artistic or an exercise to see how you can create scripts like this but this really could be used for like a facade or for um, something that needs a wireframe so hopefully you found that useful I will share this on my website, capettydavid.com. I post videos like these every week where I share with you how to use parametric design for your designs and for architecture. So thank you very much for being here, and I hope to see you on the next one.